my thing rather uh, like <laughs> reverse engineering uh Fuji films uh Bluetooth protocol to make it work with uh ESP32 kind of uh uh batch or what they call it okay. yeah so a brief who am I uh I work in CSIT as a cybersecurity R&D engineer. So I'm actually part of the government. Uh, before that, I was working in uh, HP and Seagate as a firmware engineer. Uh, I do freelance landscape and architecture photography. That's my IG, just some seamless plug over there. And uh, I do publish uh, electronic tinkering from time to time. Yep. Okay, so about the GovTech coin, um, what is it? Uh, so it's actually an ESP32 microcontroller uh, CTF batch. They give this coin out uh, to people who have like found vulnerability, vulnerability, vulnerabilities within like the government websites and all. So if you actually do in a way hack the government uh, and you report it to them, of course, through the official channels. Uh, and if they like your report, they would give you one of these as swag. Uh, or if you win like a CTF, I think you come in like uh for stack the flags maybe the top 10 or something uh they will give you like one of these uh badges as a as a prize so how i got mine uh it's actually through a colleague he gave me his so i didn't earn it or anything <laughs> yeah i got i happened to have one and then i thought like you know since it's uh esp32 kind of device i can make it talk to my camera and it has bluetooth lah. yeah oh 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 okay it's still Oh, wow. <laughs> Let me, yeah, get this sorted out first. Oh, no. That is bad. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yes. Yep. Okay. I think. That loading? It's not loading. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Uh, do you get anything? Still no. Nothing. Okay, never mind. Then what I will do is I will just switch back to my hammer. Where is my... Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just switch it to my camera. Yep. Sorry about that. Okay. Yes. Uh, so about the coin. Yeah. It's a... ESP32 kind of uh, electronic toy that's created by uh, the founders of Altap uh, when they were in GovTech as interns. Uh, I think Ragul is actually inside our uh, Telegram chat. Lah. Yeah. And I think the rest I've talked about is given out as a prize for uh, GovTech's kind of cybersecurity events. Uh, it uses an ESP32 microcontroller. Uh, I think it's a very old version of, of the current ESP32, yeah, microcontrollers out there. Uh, and it has like some breakouts, a D-pad and, and all that screen. Uh, it, it's intended for people to, to play around and hack around with it. But I think so far, nobody has actually contributed to uh, their repo. Like you, if you create an app or anything, you can actually, uh, uh, you can actually submit a pull request and then uh, they would, you know, add your app in, Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess people who 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 search for vulnerabilities, they are not really interested in <laughs> developing. Yeah, they are they are not really interested in like making something. But for me, it's like you know because of my background as a firmware engineer, and I thought like yeah, I can probably turn it into something useful. <laughs> Actually, they should, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They could, right? Yeah. So, uh, what's on the coin is actually a, just a bunch of games. Uh, it doesn't have any, like, cybersecurity challenges on it. Uh, unlike other, like, hardware hacking CTF badges. Uh, so, yeah, you, you thought, you, 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 you might have thought that it might have, like, some kind of uh, challenge on, on it, but it doesn't. Uh, it has, like, 
a bunch of, of games and stuff like that. And you can uh, program it with uh, MicroPython with the, your own custom kind of uh, uh, Python app. Yeah. So since the batch has BLE and my camera has BLE, I thought like, why not make them talk to each other? So the, the GovTech coin and the camera support like Bluetooth 4.2 BLE. Uh, and there's an existing pro project um, called the Furball project that uses the ESP32 M5 stick, uh, which is actually this thing over here. Yeah. So this small little device um, actually contains like a screen and an ESP32. Uh, and someone has made like a remote control out of it uh, for Canon and Fuji cameras. And I thought like, why not uh, do it on mine since, you know, it's been shown to be possible. So yeah, why not just adapt it to mine? Uh, and since the, the coin has an app store that uh, allows people to, you know, check in their, uh, their created uh, applications. So, you know, I can create something useful out of it. And um, it's coded on, on MicroPython. Uh, I thought like it could be a fun challenge to uh, understand DLE and, and build a new app using uh, the existing MicroPython code base. So first, I need to understand how my camera pairs with my phone. Uh, so King Ning, uh, his intro to BLE series was actually instrumental in helping me in my understanding. So kudos to that. <laughs> yeah, so quick re recap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's actually a hackware talk uh, by, by King Ning. It's a, it's a hackware talk in, in 2015, so almost 10 years ago, but uh, quite, quite a number of, of or I think probably almost all of it is, is still relevant to today's uh, uh, BLE standard. So not much has changed. La. Yeah. But um, just a quick recap, uh, a central versus a peripheral. Um, central would be uh, your controller device. So your phone, or in this case, would be the GovTech coin, would be uh, the one that controls my camera. So that would be the one that scans for the BLE uh, device to connect to. And then the peripheral will be my uh, camera, which in this case is a Fujifilm GFX100S. Uh, it will send advertising packets and I have to receive these packets and initiate the connection to the central, which will be the coin. So I need to know how my camera in introduced itself to the BLE world. Uh, and then that's um, being done in these two main uh, sort of like, uh, I guess, uh, layers of the, the BLE stack. Uh, GAP, Generic Access Profile, uh, it handles advertising because it defines service discovery and connections to uh, a central device and GET, which is basically your main form of uh, data transfer. So it will show up as like services and characteristics for, for your central to write to. So uh, the GET uh, sort of like layer will handle this uh, data transfer process. So whenever you, you send like, a, for example, a, a shutter command, it will be writing to a characteristic through the, the get layer. Yeah. So uh, first I need to sniff uh, the traffic between uh, my phone or the, the M5 stick. Yeah. Um, with, a, with a Bluetooth sniffer. And in this case, I'm using the NRF dongle. Uh, it's a very cheap dongle. I think it's about like twenty over dollars, and it's well documented. And plus, it works with Wireshark, so it's quite easy to use. Yeah. Uh, from that, I found the um, uh the MAC address and the company ID of my camera, and then I just set a basic filter for it, and then uh observe the the transaction uh whenever my camera pairs with uh my phone. Yeah. So first, I need to break down uh Fujifilm's advertising packet. Um. The raw advertising data, the, the entire packet is about 30 bytes long. Uh, it consists of three main advertising data parts and it's uh, byte order reverse. La. Yeah. So uh, each part always start with the length and the type. Uh, for example, for the flex part, um, the length is two and then the type, uh, the, the, the type is, is, that is flex. Yeah, the, the first part will be the flex uh, part. So the length is two and then uh, you can see that uh, it's inside the is it shows up as a general discoverable mode, which is basically an advertising packet. Uh, the second part will be the one twenty eight bit uh, UUID. It's a length of uh seventeen bytes long, and then uh, that's a custom UUID that uh, Fuji use. Uh, but the next part I think will be the more uh, interesting part that we need to take note of. It will be the manufacturer specific part. So. Uh, from there, you can see uh, the company ID that Fuji uses. 
and uh, it has this uh, custom data part that, uh, that it uses to sort of like identify a camera for uh, advertising and, and pairing. Yeah. So to break down this manufacturing uh, specific data portion, um, there's three parts to it. Uh, first would be the company ID. The second part would be their uh, proprietary type token. Um, not too sure what is that used for, but uh, it was there inside the Ferber project and I sort of like uh, adapted uh, it to, to mine as well. Uh, the last part would be important because uh, they, use it, they use this part called the M token for pairing. So what, what this does is that um, it's a gener it's a randomly generated four byte kind of value at the at the end of the the manufacturer specific AD portion, and you need to uh basically echo that back echo that back to the camera. So uh your central device would receive that the end token and then echo it back to the camera with your uh central device name to show that to tell the camera that hey yeah I'm going to pair with you, and that would actually start the pairing process. Yeah, so that's how uh, Fuji self identifies a, a central device like your phone or some other device, uh, in this case, a coin, to, to pair with it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So that actually sort of like if let's say you happen to be in a place where there are a bunch of photographers and then that, that could happen because like maybe you're shooting the same thing and all of them are trying to pair the same thing but uh, the randomly generated like sort of M token would prevent clashes in, in, in this case. Yeah. Yeah. If everyone's yeah, intends to pair the same time. So I think they are just uh, covering their bases for that. Lah. Yeah. So this is the pairing protocol uh, in a high level. Um, First, yeah, the scanning and then the advertising uh, by the peripheral. Uh, then after that, once we receive the packet, uh, the connection attempt will be made. And then after the connection is, has succeeded, then the pairing will begin. So I have to send in the, the M token plus uh, the, the name of my camera. And then after that, subscribe to a bunch of Fuji's uh, proprietary notify and indication characteristics before uh, my central device, the coin would be able to use the, the camera. Yeah. So it's a, it's a bit complicated over here, but um, yeah, I'm not too sure how to <laughs> break it down any further, but basically this is a high level uh, BLE pairing procedure for uh, my camera and the coin. Yeah. So this is the critical services and characteristics for, for pairing. Um, the first part uh, would be to write my write the M token and the coin name to uh, the first three uh, characteristics. Uh, the second part would be to uh, subscribe to the, the green part would be, yeah, I have to subscribe to all these uh, notification and indication characteristics. And then the last part would be the, the shutter and the geotech uh, services. The geotech, I don't really need to care because I don't have GPS on my coin, but uh, it's important to take note for the shutter part because that's where the main functionality comes in. So uh, all these UUIDs, right, um, if not for the Ferber project, I, I had an easy time with it because like in a sense, I can just um, sort of refactor Ferber's code uh, into Python and they already have all the UUIDs available for me to just uh, sort of like in a way copy and paste. But if let's say I were to do it from scratch, I would have to use uh, my NRF uh, Bluetooth sniffer and then really sniff through the entire... Um, scanning and uh, pairing process and then slowly sift through um, each uh, UUID and, and take note of them and then re-implement that on, on my side. So it would have taken a bit longer, but it should still be possible. Uh. Yeah, but I just had like, in a way, an easier time because I could just <laughs> use their, 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 uh, their pro the protocol that they have implemented. Uh. Yeah. So, okay, um, MicroPython on the coin. So the coin is designed like five years ago and it uses a very old release of the MicroPython core, which at that time did not have BLE support. Lah. So I had to download like the, the latest MicroPython firmware and then uh, flash that in into the coin uh, before BLE, before the BLE libraries could work. So I had to uh, sort of like um, change a, quite a bit of their libraries and add in additional like Bluetooth libraries to their original repo before I could uh, start to play around with BLE on MicroPython on the coin. Yeah. 
So from that, I studied like the MicroPython's Bluetooth API. And then um, initially, my, my first iteration did not have any support for uh, uh, subscribing or, or to, to get like indi indications and notifications. But this is important because that's the main way to, to write to the characteristic and to, uh, to communicate to the camera that I want to trigger the shutter with. Yeah, so I only could like scan and connect and, and write to it. Lah. So I, I dug around to with the MicroPython GitHub and I found that uh, they have the AIO BLE library. It's not really well documented. They don't have like a wiki for it or what. You sort of have to dive into the code and see how they have implemented this AI, AIO BLE uh, library on, over the uh, Bluetooth API. But it's basically a, a wrapper for, the, for their Bluetooth API with the necessary classes and methods to support uh, the more advanced uh, BLE functionality. So, which is good lah, because I don't have to reinvent the wheel and, and write like my own function or methods for, for subscribing and notifying and all that. Yeah, so that's example code that you can study and get yourself familiar with and then uh, try it out on your, your end. Um, and also, of course, I referred to Ferber's implementation of the pairing protocol and that saved me quite a bit of work. Yeah. So, okay, firing the shutter uh, involves writing to this uh, characteristics. La. So there's a bunch of byte arrays for to represent each uh, shutter action types. Uh, and you have to write to the following uh, characteristics at the bottom uh, in order for the camera to uh, understand that you are trying to fire the shutter. Yeah. So there's, there are three main uh, character, uh, sort of like three main actions in a sense uh, to press the shutter, to release the shutter and to focus. So you press, if you don't release, right, then the, the camera would be stuck in the sense that, yeah, it, it, the, 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 the shutter release is not, uh, it, won't, it won't go up. Now. So you when you press the shutter, you have to, it's like sort of like imitating the, the finger press. You press and then you release, that kind of thing. Yeah, if not, you will think that you're just uh, pressing down on the button and not releasing. So you have to, when you want to fire the shutter, you have to press and release. So you have to send these two actions in. And, and then focus, you have to focus and then release as well. Yeah. Minimum delay. Minimum delay. Uh, there, from what I see in the implementation of verbal, they didn't put any minimum delay. Uh, and I also didn't put any minimum. I, I got away with it. Uh, yeah. At first, to be safe, to be safe, I did put like a few milliseconds delay just in case. Uh. Then I thought like, okay, maybe I make it faster. I just remove. Then, okay, it still works. Uh, so I, I just kept it. Yeah, I, kept, I just kept it like that. Uh, yeah. So, okay, programming the ESP32, uh, quite straightforward. Uh, you just clone their, their repo, and then you grab the dependencies uh, in the slide over here, uh, and then use their flashing speed to go and flash uh, MicroPython uh, onto the ESP32. Uh, the other uh, important thing to take note would be uh, using AMPY uh, to sort of like uh, expedite your testing of code because if not, you have to keep refreshing your your uh, ESP32, which takes very long. I think it takes like a few minutes to refresh each time. So, uh, AMPY um, is very useful for rapid prototyping because uh, with this command line over here, uh, it straight away just loads in the, the Python app onto ESP32 and you can straight away play around with it. Lah. Yeah. So, it saves me a lot of time. If not, I have to keep uh, yeah, flashing and then testing and all that. Yeah. Okay, so the current features uh, is integrated as an app in uh, the coins uh, file system. Uh, there's the ability to scan for and pair with uh, Fuji camera. I think uh, it should work on, on most Fuji, current Fuji cameras, uh, but of course I only tested it in my camera because I only have one. Yeah, uh, but it should work with, with other Fuji cameras as well. Um, it can save the existing pairing in information and it supports like the different autofocus modes, la, single, uh, continuous, and then shutter release. Uh, then that's my GitHub talk if you want to take a look at my code. Um, some, but it's not fully, I mean, there's still some bugs to work out on. Um, one thing is uh, it can connect. Uh, currently, it, it does save uh, your connection, but I'm unable to, to connect to that safe uh, uh, self like connection. I have to repair every single time because I'm, I'm not too sure I'm getting a, a weird error every time I, I try to uh, pair again to a safe connection. But so I, uh, so that's one part to, to work out on. Uh, another part would be um, the time lapse mode uh, should be possible. Basically, I just have to come up with a fancy algorithm for uh, firing the shutter 
at consistent uh, intervals. Yep. Okay, uh, some demo. I think I will play the video first, just in case uh, <laughs> the live demo don't work, but it should work, hopefully. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so now I'm launching the app over here. It takes a while to launch because, you know, Python is on top of the ESP32 layer, so it, yeah, it takes, it's, it's kind of slow now. Yeah, so now I'm connecting to it. Yeah, the pairing process was slow at that time because I put in a lot of delays. Then after I removed the delays and it still worked, then I think, okay, it should be quite stable. <laughs> I didn't really do much testing after that because this was, this, this was quite large. Yeah. So now it tests. Yeah, I can, I can shut, I can, yeah, I can fire the shutter, which is the main thing. Yeah. So now I can focus it. So if you look at the screen, it actually has that green dot that signifies that uh, the focus is in uh, effect. So continuous, I just basically send the focus press and not send the release command. So it, it is as if my, uh, my, my, my finger is on the button, on the focus button. Yeah. But once you are done with it, you just press like shutter and then it, it, it will fire. Yeah. Give me, like, what, what, what other things? Like, is everything that you can do on the camera available like, by users? Like, I don't know, like, streaming and all that. Notes from, like, going to, like, oh, okay, okay. Uh, changing I, the app, uh, changing the like, people. Ah, yeah, yeah, good question. Um, I think so far, even on uh, Fuji's official app, right? There's only the shutter release functionality. Oh. So I don't know whether they have uh hidden APIs for that or, or what, but so far I think nobody has managed to dug out or reverse engineer that. Lah. Yeah. Maybe they have, maybe I don't, I don't I don't know. But unless you have their yeah, SDK for the camera, then yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it would be fun if let's say you know there's more functionality, like you can change the focus point, you can adjust, you know, the, the point to wherever you want a screen, or even like have some form of streaming to you know, whatever device, that would be pretty fun. But uh, so far, I think the API only allows for uh, focus and shutter release, which is bare bones, but you know, it will work for most stuff. It's just that, yeah, you know, you have to do your, your adjustments on the camera first before uh, using the app to, yeah, to, to, to focus or to uh, trigger the shutter. Okay, so that's all. Um, I'm now going to attempt to do the demo here. Uh, Let's see how am I going to do that. Okay. Uh, let me see whether my camera is working. <laughs> yeah. The other camera. Yeah. So, okay. Okay, it's working. Yeah, that is good. Okay, finally. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it changed like, oh, it's fine. Yeah, so I just have to change my uh video source. Okay. Okay, okay, can. Can see, right? Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah. So, okay, this is everyone on the on my camera. <laughs> yeah, I just need to yeah, say hi. <laughs> Let me turn on my point. Yes. I'm never sitting here. I feel like we see this. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think it will be good. Yeah. You just... Yeah, no, I, my spin turn. Yeah, I think you just hold at this. This. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can. Yeah. 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 You just play that. Okay. okay. Yeah. I totally yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is very hacky, but it won't be hackware without hacky stuff. <laughs> okay. Now I'm at my Fuji remote app. Oh. Yeah. So I'm launching it. I need to put my camera in carrying mode. Yeah. So it's carrying now. Okay. So I will initiate a new scan. And pray to the demo gods that it will work. Uh, yeah. Sometimes it may time out. Okay, it didn't time out. That's good. <laughs> okay, so now I'm connecting and pairing to it. I mean, at least I, I implemented the timeout feature so I know that, you know, that an error, it won't just die. Okay, <laughs> okay so it, it's already paired, which is good. Yeah. So okay. now, okay, uh, let me try focusing. Okay, so now yeah. point, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. I let, uh, so let, now yeah. I can focus. Oh, let me adjust my screen. Like that. Ah, so, okay. okay. I think now it's easier for everyone to see on the okay. web. Okay, so now I'm doing a single focus. Yeah. If you want to shift to continuous focus, I just 
see if I leave it there, you, then you see the, the green part is still uh, active, which means yeah. that the focus is continuous. Go back to single, yeah, then it's uh, really stop. Now the shutter, release, yeah. yeah. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, should we take a photo like that? Okay, one, two, three. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Yep. That's oh. all. It. Yep. Yeah. So that's the end of the talk. Basically, um, I will put the code on GitHub. Uh, don't laugh at my very badly written code because it's very rushed <laughs> for hackware. Uh, but yes, um, the code is on the GitHub that I linked up on uh, the slides just now, and uh, you can go check it out and see whether you can oh, <laughs> see whether you can implement it in your own ESP32 project too. Because the GovTech coin is not available to everyone, uh, you need to sort of earn it. But you can implement it in in any ESP32 la, basically. Yeah, so you any ESP32 it should work lah. Yeah, if not, uh, if you are not into like coding or what, don't worry. There's also this thing called the M5 stick. Um, it supports uh the Ferber project supports I think Canon and Fuji, so way more than what I did. Uh, I think it can support Sony as well. Uh, I'm not too sure, but uh, sadly for the Nikon folks, don't have. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you can check this out also. Uh, it has a nice screen and all that. Um, and yeah, okay. I think that's it. Yeah. Any questions, just let me know in the chat or uh, you can ping me later. You can check out. <laughs> yeah. So, so one of the steps you have to do is the same thing on the device to find um where it's there on the screen, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, first at that point, you can like replace the fur and then you take it yeah instead of time your time. Uh so, does that mean that you could have this on to your uh, yes, yes, you can. Yeah. So, uh, if you code it out in like the native ESP32 API, like uh, expressive, uh, in at, like how expressive internet, you you could actually make the same app. Or if not, you if you are if let's say the Arduino flavored kind of uh um sort of like style is is more towards. Uh, what your where your interest lie? You can also do that too. Yeah, yeah. it also accept like Arduino flavored C. Yeah, so so that works as well. Yeah. Uh, no, it wouldn't. But you okay? The good thing is that they they gave the schematic for this too. So I think they also give you like the GPIOs and where the 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 each button connect to which GPIO and all that. So you just have to make sure in your code. Uh, you address those properly and it should uh it should work too lah. Yeah. I think the LCD No, you can't, you can't, you can't, yeah, yeah, yeah. That I think yeah <laughs> you you can't dual boot your coin in that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be cool, but no. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh wow, that's yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so ESP32 is like a lot more advanced than I thought. Yeah. <laughs> and this is actually a 2019 kind of version. I don't know. It's a W Rover B. It's quite old one now. Uh. Yeah. Yep. So, right. Yep. That's all. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I can. Oh yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Yes, you can press. Yeah. You can see how how far the it's still connected. So you can see how far the <laughs> uh, okay, let's give a round of yeah.